Well, I think the thing, main reason, Bruce was really ahead of his time. And I worked out with Bruce, he and I worked out for three years. Anyway, I decided to go to Rome and, and do the movie with Bruce, and of course he killed me, but he said, I don't want to make you out to be a bad guy. A captivating video about Bruce Lee recently surfaced online. Chuck Norris, who is an 84-year-old martial arts actor like Bruce Lee before his death, was the star of the video. He shocked everyone with his memories of the legendary Bruce Lee as it was the last time he claimed he would ever talk about the late star. Chuck and Bruce were close friends before Bryce's tragic end. In fact, they starred in a blockbuster movie together, winning the hearts of many and increasing the fame of martial arts in the United States. That wasn't the only thing Chuck had to say in the video. Keep watching as we reveal everything Chuck mentioned about Bruce and how their friendship even came to be in the first place. Chuck Norris's video. In the video that has been trending about Bruce Lee, Chuck Norris spoke about his age as he celebrated his birthday. He mentioned that despite turning 84, he felt very youthful, similar to being 48. Fond memories flooded his mind as he remembered his friendship with Bruce Lee. He recalled their days of friendship, revealing that they had spent three years training together in the United States before Bruce went to Hong Kong to start his acting journey. Chuck disclosed that after a two-year silence, Bruce reached out to him unexpectedly. Bruce excitedly informed Chuck about his thriving career in Hong Kong, boasting of the success of two films. Eager to collaborate on a project that would leave a lasting impression, Bruce proposed a memorable fight scene set in the historic Colosseum in Rome. Chuck, still deeply involved in teaching and martial arts, saw this as a thrilling definition of his routine and eagerly accepted the invitation to work alongside his old friend on the big screen. Before we find out more, do you know who Chuck is? Carlos Ray Norris, known as Chuck Norris, was born on March 10, 1940 in the USA. He's famous for being a martial artist and an actor. Chuck is skilled in Tang Soo Do, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and Judo, all earning him a black belt. After his time in the Air Force, Chuck won lots of martial arts competitions and then made up his own martial art called Chun Kuk Do. He then moved to Hollywood where he taught martial arts to famous people. Chuck got a small part in a spy movie called The Wrecking Crew in 1969. Then Bruce Lee asked him to be in one of his movies, The Way of the Dragon, in 1972. After that, Chuck kept acting, and his buddy Steve McQueen suggested he take it seriously. Chuck starred in a movie called Breaker Breaker in 1977, and it made money. His next big role was in Good Guys Wear Black in 1978, which was a hit. And from there, he became popular as an action movie star. Norris was born to Wilma and Ray D. Norris, who did many different jobs from being a soldier in World War II, fixing things as a mechanic and driving buses to hauling goods as a truck driver. Norris once mentioned that his family roots trace back to Ireland and his Cherokee heritage. He got his name from Carlos Berry, who was his dad's pastor. Norris was the oldest among his two brothers, with Wieland and Aaron being younger. Sadly, Wieland, the middle brother, shared a chilling prophecy with his elder sibling, predicting he wouldn't see his 27th birthday. Tragically, this forecast turned true when Wieland lost his life in the Vietnam War in 1970, when Norris was just 16 years old, his parents went their separate ways, leaving him and his brothers to navigate through the tough times. After the split, Norris, along with his mother and siblings, moved around, first settling in Prairie Village, Kansas, before eventually making their way to Torrance, California. Chuck Norris has spoken about his early years as rather gloomy. He wasn't good at sports, didn't stand out in school, and tended to be reserved. His dad, Ray, had sporadic jobs as a car mechanic and would sometimes disappear for long stretches due to drinking problems. Chuck felt ashamed of his father's actions and the family's financial struggles, which made him withdraw from himself for most of his childhood. In 1958, Chuck enlisted in the United States Air Force and became an air policeman. He was stationed at Osan Air Base in South Korea, where he earned the nickname Chuck. It was during this time that he first delved into Tang Soo Do, a martial art. Chuck's interest in Tang Soo Do grew, leading him to achieve black belts in the art and eventually establish the Chun Kuk Do, 
which translates to the universal way. Upon returning to the United States, Chuck continued his service as an AP, this time at March Air Force Base in California. Things were definitely looking up for Chuck. In August 1962, Chuck was released from the Air Force with the rank of Airman First Class. After his military duty, he sought to become a police officer in Torrance, California. While waiting for his application, Chuck established a martial arts studio. Despite setbacks, including defeats in initial tournaments against Joe Lewis and Alan Steen, Chuck persevered and continued to hone his skills. He faced challenges at the International Karate Championships, losing to Tony Tulliners, but by 1967, Chuck's dedication paid off as he began to secure victories, notably defeating Vic Moore. On June 3, 1967, Chuck was triumphant in the karate tournament, defeating seven opponents before facing Skipper Mullins in the final bout. His success continued when, on June 24, he claimed the championship at S. Henry Cho's All-American Karate Championship held at Madison Square Garden. In a shocking feat, Chuck seized the title from Julio LaSalle and overcame Joe Lewis. During this period, Chuck balanced his martial arts pursuits with employment at the Northrop Corporation and the establishment of a series of karate schools. Notably, his official website shows a roster of celebrity clientele, including Steve McQueen, Chad McQueen, Bob Barker, Priscilla Presley, Donny Osmond, and Marie Osmond, who sought instruction at his schools. Another loss, but more philanthropy. Back in early, Chuck faced his 10th and final loss when he unexpectedly lost to Louis Delgado. But on November 24, 1968, he redeemed himself by defeating Delgado, claiming the prestigious title of professional middleweight karate champion, a title he proudly held for six consecutive years. Then, on April 1st, Chuck bravely defended his All-American Karate Championship title in a round-robin tournament held at the Karate Tournament of Champions of North America. In that same year, Norris had victory once more, securing his second All-American Karate Championship title. It was during his time competing that Chuck crossed paths with Bruce Lee, who was gaining fame for his role in the TV series The Green Hornet. From this encounter, a strong bond formed between them, growing into a friendship and a partnership in training and work. It gets better. Back in 1969, during the first weekend of August, Chuck stood his ground to defend his world champion title at the International Karate Championship. This fierce competition gathered champions from nearly all 50 states, plus a handful from other countries who came for the preliminary rounds. Despite the tough competition, Chuck emerged victorious, keeping hold of his title. Not only that, he clinched karate's triple crown for having the most tournament wins that year. His impressive achievements didn't go unnoticed, as he was also honored with the Fighter of the Year award by Black Belt magazine. Around this same time, Chuck took his first steps into the world of acting with a role in the Dean Martin movie, The Wrecking Crew. It was the beginning of a new chapter for Norris, as he got into the film and entertainment industry. It was proof of his talents beyond the martial arts arena. Chuck got married to his classmate Diane K. Holchek in December 1958. Chuck was 18 years old at the time and Diane was 17. They first met in 1956 while attending high school in Torrance, California. Their first child, Mike, was born in 1962. Chuck also had a daughter in 1963 from a relationship outside of his marriage. Later, Chuck and his wife welcomed their second son, Eric. But after being married for 30 years, Norris and Holchek divorced in 1989. They had separated in 1988 during the filming of The Delta Force II. In 1990, Chuck started two important things, the United Fighting Arts Federation and Kickstart Kids. These were not just random acts, but part of his giving back to the community. He wanted to help kids who were in tough situations, so he created these organizations. Their main goal was to help kids feel better about themselves and learn how to focus. By teaching them martial arts, Chuck hoped to steer them away from drugs and bad influences. He believed that if kids spent their time learning and growing through martial arts, they could build a brighter future for themselves. 
Chuck has a special place in Navasota, Texas, where they bottle water. But it's not just any water, it's water with a purpose. When people buy this water, a part of the money goes to helping the environment and supporting Kickstart Kids. That's not all. In the same 1990, the movies Chuck starred in had made more than $500 million all around the world. At that time, people were comparing him to both Bruce Lee and Clint Eastwood. Sometimes they even called him the blonde Bruce Lee because of his roles in martial arts films. His tough guy image was also compared to Dirty Harry, a character played by Clint Eastwood. In that same year, MGM got hold of the Canon Films collection. Despite this, Norris kept on making movies with Aaron. They worked together on films like Delta Force 2, The Hitman, Sidekicks in 1993, Hellbound in 1994, Top Dog in 1995, and Forest Warrior in 1996. He's known for helping out organizations like Funds for Kids, the Veterans Administration National Salute to Hospitalized Veterans, the United Way, and the Make-A-Wish Foundation. He gives money and does events to raise money for them. On November 28, 1998, he got married to Gina O'Kelly, who used to be a model and is 23 years younger than him. O'Kelly already had two kids from a previous marriage. She had twins on August 30, 2001. He worked with the U.S. Veterans Administration because of his time in the United States Air Force in Korea. He wanted to make issues like pensions and health care for veterans more well-known. Because of all the good he's done and keeps doing, he got the Veteran of the Year Award in 2001 at the American Veteran Awards. In India, Chuck helps the VJ Amritraj Foundation. This group's mission is to assist people facing disease, tragedy, and tough times. With his gifts, Chuck aids the foundation in helping children with HIV AIDS in Delhi, a school for the blind in Karnataka, and a mission for HIV slash AIDS infected adults and mentally ill patients in Cochin. Chuck shared with Entertainment Tonight's Mary Hart that he didn't meet his daughter from a previous relationship until she was 26. She found out he was her father when she was 16. In 1990, a year after Chuck's divorce from his first wife, Diane Holchek, his daughter sent him a letter revealing he was her father. Fan mail and Chuck and Bruce Lee's friendship. Chuck went to Rome with Bruce and they had a very intense fight at the Colosseum. Bruce won in the scene, beating Chuck's character. The video of Chuck talking about it was actually from a very old VHS tape that somebody found and fixed up. In the interview, Chuck talked about what it was like making that famous fight scene with Bruce Lee in Way of the Dragon and shared some secrets from behind the scenes. Even though there wasn't a lot of capital to make the movie, only $145,000, it ended up being extremely successful, making over $60 million all around the world. Chuck was very happy and amazed to be in the movie with Bruce Lee. He talked about how much fun it was to work with Bruce and how they enjoyed it together. Chuck especially liked being part of the big fight scene, which everyone said was one of the best in martial arts history. Being in that scene meant a lot to Chuck because he knew people everywhere would love it. Lots of fans sent Chuck letters because they loved the movie so much. Chuck remembered one letter in particular. The person who wrote it asked if Bruce Lee had actually pulled hair from Chuck's chest during a fight scene where Chuck's character threw Bruce to the ground. Chuck laughed when he talked about it. There's more. The writer joked that if Bruce really did pull out hair, then Chuck must be a real stud. But Chuck explained in his letter back that the scene wasn't real and Bruce didn't pull any hair. Chuck talked about another letter he received and in this letter, a fan shared that he and his son had watched Return of the Dragon an astonishing 26 times. The fan also asked if the ice creams featured in the movie were being sold in stores. Chuck found this amusing and addressed it in the video, jokingly saying that unfortunately the ice creams weren't up for sale. He expressed his surprise at how widely loved the movie was, finding it hard to believe that people had watched it 18, 19, or even 20 times. In the video, Chuck also remembered when he first met Bruce Lee. It all went down in 1968 when Chuck snagged the world championship in New York City at Madison Square Garden. As they strolled towards the hotel, they talked about life and deep stuff. 
When the elevator pinged on Chuck's floor, he stepped out and surprise Bruce hopped out too. Before they knew it, they were in the hallway doing impromptu workouts. It was very late, around midnight, when they hit the gym. They pumped iron until 4 o'clock in the morning. Bruce had a plane to catch at 7 a.m. to L.A., so he told Chuck to start getting ready to head out. But before they split, Bruce suggested they keep working out together whenever possible. And once they were back in Los Angeles, they stuck to their word. Bruce crashed in Culver City and his backyard was like a mini gym with a lot of space for training. For almost two years, they trained together in Chuck's backyard. Bruce had his own ways of practicing back then, which were different from Chuck's methods. Chuck talked about how he used to think it was best to only kick below the waist, but Bruce disagreed. Bruce thought that sticking to kicks below the waist was too limiting. Chuck saw both the good and bad sides of this idea. He believed that everyone should know how to kick anywhere, not just below the waist. Chuck felt it was important for people to be adaptable in their fighting style. If there was a chance to strike high on an opponent, Chuck thought they should take it, even if they usually preferred to keep their kicks low. And that's exactly what they did. During their time together, Chuck and Bruce focused on practicing martial arts moves. Chuck showed Bruce various high kicks like spinning heel kicks and jumping spinning round kicks. He suggested to Bruce that while groin kicks were effective, they should also aim for the face. In return, Bruce introduced Chuck to close-range combat techniques such as sticky hands, which Chuck found useful to learn. As they continued training, Chuck taught Bruce different high kicks, which Bruce eagerly embraced and became very skilled at. He worked hard to perfect these moves, showing his strong commitment to improving his martial arts skills. After approximately six months, Bruce was able to perform the moves nearly as well as Chuck. In the video, Chuck also expressed gratitude for his successful film career, which had its roots when Bruce visited New York for the 1968 world title fight at Madison Square Garden. They began training together in Los Angeles, dedicating over two years to their workouts. Eventually, Bruce left for Hong Kong to pursue his acting career, and Chuck didn't hear from him for about two years. Then one day, unexpectedly, Bruce gave Chuck a call. He shared the exciting news that he had made two movies in Hong Kong, and they were big hits. Bruce was eager to create a movie with a memorable fight scene, envisioning a showdown reminiscent of ancient gladiators set in the Grand Colosseum in Rome. He specifically asked Chuck to be his opponent in the film. Chuck jokingly asked Bruce who would emerge victorious in the fight, to which Bruce confidently responded that he would, as he was the star of the movie. Chuck wasn't surprised by Bruce's answer, knowing it was expected of him. Chuck agreed, acknowledging that Bruce had a desire to defeat the world champion because at that time, Chuck Norris held that esteemed title. Bruce jokingly added that it wasn't merely about winning, he wanted to take down the world champion, alluding to the storyline of the movie. Despite being the champion, Chuck decided to join Bruce in Rome to film the movie. In the movie, Chuck's character was defeated by Bruce's character, but Bruce expressed that he didn't want to portray Chuck as a villain in the scene. Instead, he planned to honor Chuck's achievements by placing his uniform and belt across his chest during the scene, symbolizing two great warriors facing off. This collaboration marked the beginning of Chuck's successful career in the movie industry. He kept making movies, doing 23 more after that and was about to start his 24th. He then shared some photos he took while filming different movies. One showed a scene from Lone Wolf McQuaid where he's fighting David Keating and throwing a reverse punch to his solar plexus. Another photo showed a jump side kick to one of the bad guys in the same movie. If you zoom in, you can see how close Chuck was to the guy's face, almost a quarter of an inch away. After that, he shared a photo from the movie Silent Rage where he fought a tough guy who just wouldn't give up even after being kicked with a special move. Despite Chuck's efforts, his opponent remained standing, but the picture showed how near Chuck was to landing those kicks in his intense fight scenes. To conclude the video, Chuck was satisfied with the wonderful journey he had experienced, which was the same journey he had shared with his dear friend Total Jim. 
What do you think about all Chuck had to say about Bruce Lee? Let us know in the comments. If you enjoyed watching this video, hit the like button, share it with everyone, and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of our next updates.